All right, hello, Texans for the Arts Nation. Um, Chris Kiley, Associate Director of Texans for the Arts here with my colleague and fearless leader, Ann Graham, Executive Director. Um, today on our weekly arts advocacy update, Ann will be walking us through a little bit of where we stand on the legislative process, um, what to expect in the coming weeks. But most importantly, we wanted to start today, uh, we couldn't start today, that is, without addressing what happened across the state last week and the widespread catastrophe that this polar vortex has brought upon us all in Texas. Um, arts advocacy is obviously at the core of our work, but we just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that many Texans are suffering and continue to suffer. Millions of Texans were without power. Many still remain without water, um, and the road to recovery from this is going to be long and arduous. Um, this is rather personal for me as uh, a member of the staff at Texans for the Arts. My wife and I remain displaced from our home after a pipe burst and destroyed our apartment. Um, so it's just important for all of us at this time, I think, to recognize that all of us in Texas are going through this as a shared experience. Um, there are many challenges associated with it. We are here for you and with you and experiencing many of the same things that all of you are. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge that we understand how difficult times are. Um, at the same time though, I can, as I sit here in <clears throat> my sort of new digs, my hotel room living, I would, I would say it's, it's equally as important that as an arts community, we stick together because there are many worthy causes um, that the legislature is dealing with, the financial struggles that are being placed on the state right now. We know the pandemic has not gone away and it will continue to be at the front, forefront of the challenges we're facing. And no doubt the events of the last week have also created another set of challenges that absolutely must be addressed. Uh, moving forward though, um, Anne received an email today, she'll be talking about it. The arts community also has not been shielded from some of the challenges of the last week. Um, and the work for us must continue because as a community, we know how important the arts are to a healthy, vibrant and thriving uh, community. And without each other, we won't get very far. Um, so in acknowledging that, I wanna pass it off to Anne here. She's gonna talk a little bit about the current legislative, where we stand currently in the legislative process. Um, we do have a couple of resources for our friends who are continuing to struggle um, and an update from our summit from a couple of weeks ago. Anne? Great, thank you so much, Chris. And yes, ongoing challenges for those of you who even have the privilege of now having internet back uh, are seeing the work that is happening across the state from citizens and our elected officials to try to provide resources for those people who still don't have water, don't have shelter, don't have food, and that need will continue. Um, if that is the case for you, um, two places to start are to reach out to your elected officials in Texas. Um, if you don't know who they are, you can, with the internet, go to who represents me. Again, that's assuming that you have access to these tools. Uh, who represents me and you put in your address and it will tell you and give you an email link to your state legislator and also some of your municipal leadership. Calling 311 is an, um, a way also, we know that that was very problematic in the height of the storm because it was overloaded, but it can still be an important uh, resource for you and your community. And I'll close out with a few um, other tools, FEMA and SBA and some guidance on that in a minute. Um, so very sensitive to what people are experiencing. And again, as Chris had mentioned, just received an email from a, one of our members and a theater company where their building was just significantly damaged by a water main break. And that again is on top of all of the pandemic losses that people are experiencing right now. With this collective and increasing uh, need for resources, we do know that there are federal dollars coming into the state uh, because of the disaster de declaration by President Biden. I'm not sure yet how those funds are gonna be distributed. 
Um, that is one. And the, the other art supporter uh, that we are also looking for and hoping is the significant resources in the next CARES package or the next federal package that's not been approved yet, but certainly something that we hope will be to be able to provide a breadth of resources from additional uh, PPP and unemployment to um, additional resources of, of all sorts for the arts, nonprofit sector, and, and so much of what we need in this field. Where we stand in the legislative process is uh, we, we stand with more need now being expressed because of this and uh, storm and our needs are going to be, they're not falling on deaf ears by any means, but more competitive ears and the resources are going to be that much harder. Um, on February 9th, we testified in front of the Senate Finance Committee. The full committee was present. They were very attentive. It was a long day. That was the end of our summit. Um, and they were asking good questions and wanting, wanting to hear more about why the arts are important. There were some good questions asked about the relationship we felt that exists between the arts and health and the arts and mental health. And some of our, um, our board members who spoke certainly spoke to the powerful relationship between arts and healing. Again, we are asking for uh, expanded resources and to restore full funding for the Texas Commission on the Arts Cultural District Program, which reaches many communities around the state. And we will continue to advocate for that. In the House, uh, the budget, decision, budget decisions are just starting to be made. The House Appropriations Committees have all been reformed under the new Speaker of the House, Dade Phelan. There is a new committee structure. You can go to Texas Legislature online. Again, if you have um, network uh, and look up what the committee structure is, we will be providing testimony at their first hearing, which will be partly over the Texas Commission on the Arts on Monday. Again, bringing the important information to them about why investing in the arts is so important. The House currently has the $10 million appropriation for the Texas Commission on the Arts Cultural Districts, and we will be thanking them for their leadership in maintaining that level of support. We are not asking for additional resources for that, given the landscape that we know. But we are encouraged and will speak to the economic impact, the health impact, the community impact as to why it's important more than ever right now to invest in the arts. So there's, there's a rhythm to the process that takes place in the, both in the House and in the Senate. They're all on their own pathways evaluating every state agency's budget. Um, the one thing the state legislature has to do in the session is to pass a balanced budget. That is the goal for the end of May. May 31st is the last day of the session. So um, what remains really important for all of you, our advocates to do is to make sure that you do keep in touch with and know who your elected officials are and your decision makers are. Sometimes we reach out directly to you knowing what districts you're in for with key leaders. Um, and I can't underestimate how important that relationship is that you have with your elected officials. We are still setting up legislative visits after our summit. Um, if you were not part of the summit and you're interested in that, you can also reach out to us at info at texansforthearts.com. So we are here. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we will be a large part of the process of uh, continuing to support the effort for securing additional resources, along with additional resources for the pandemic, um, which we are in desperate need of for the state as well. And of course, Ann, just to, to follow up on that, for those of you in our base who have had your legislative meetings, congratulations and kudos to you. We're so glad. For those of you who haven't, uh, as I mentioned, there is still plenty of time. And please use us as a resource. Of course, you can email Ann at info at texansforthearts.com or me at admin at texansforthearts.com. But do check out our YouTube channel as well, because throughout this whole process, um, if it's not already very soon, the whole program from our Arts Advocacy Summit will be posted on our YouTube channel. There's also <clears throat> brief videos that you can share with your elected officials that sort of outline our legislative agenda and why they're so important. So there are resources that we have here to help you. So stay in touch, be sure to check out those resources and make sure you share those with your elected officials as well. So in closing for now, I'm gonna share the screen here and just show a couple resources that we posted on a newsletter that we sent out yesterday. Um, FEMA, the Federal Emergency um, Emergency Act, excuse me, I should know that off the top of my head, 
they do have a program for if you go to disasterassistance.gov um, here for those people affected by the polar vortex, it can be funding for housing, temporary housing funds to support the repair or replacement of owner occupied homes, funds for uninsured or underinsured disaster caused expenses and other serious needs. So disasterassistance.gov, you can apply 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not a fast process, but it is federal support. That is one. There's a procedural here. If you go to, again, the, the website disasterassistance.gov, it walks you through the process of what you need to, to file uh, a request for recovery dollars. The other available federal resource is the SBA, US Small Business Administration. And they have an 800 number here, 800-659-2955. I feel a little bit like a commercial, but um, there is a link here and also um, their phone number that you can call for more information to get um, loans, low interest loans for damage caused by the storm. Those are just two resources that are available. A number of municipalities will probably also set up emergency funds if they haven't already. And again, as I've seen all over social media, a lot of our elected officials are delivering uh, water, supplies, food, certainly looking for you, their constituents to make sure that you are safe and sound. So um, without further ado, I just want to say hang in there. Thank you. Please let us know if there is anything we can do for you. Uh, we are all in this together. We look forward to advocating and continue to advocate for resources uh, from our state leadership and um, know that uh, the sun is shining today. We hope it's a little brighter every day and there's still a pathway ahead for, our, for all of us. So thank you. Chris, any final remarks? No, I think I think you hit it on. I think you got it all there. And thanks everybody for spending some time with us today. And um, you know, sometimes when the weather gets nicer and everything seems to have disappeared, it seems like a million years ago that everything was covered in ice, but it was just a few days ago. Be sure to reach out to your friends and your neighbors. Um, you know, our community community right now is the best thing we have in terms of a uh, defense for our mental and emotional well-being. And being together and working together and checking up on our loved ones, that's the most important thing I think we can do above everything else right now. So call your neighbors, call your friends, and stay well. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.